What's good, y'all? My name is Josh High Tech, and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm talking about the things that I've learned after over three years of learning how to code. So this is going to be a good one. Make sure you all subscribe if you haven't already to this channel. And I have another channel called High Tech Court where I talk about all things NBA. So be sure to subscribe to that one as well. I post more frequently on that one. But if you just want to hear programming talk, stay on this channel. Make sure you subscribe and let's get straight into this video. All right. So the first thing that I've learned after over three years of learning how to code is documentation, 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 like literally reading and writing a lot because it's really helpful, it's really beneficial, not only for myself, but also for people who are going to see my work. When I write the lines of code, people need to understand why I did that. Documentation is very important in explaining exactly what you've done. And for me, that is something that I've improved a lot on year after year after year, it's just documentation. It's just literally, when I write this code, explaining it. Write this code, explaining it. Do not go into a situation where it is not explained because that's not how it goes. For me personally, that's what I do. I do it for pull requests. I do it for everything. Like I make sure that I lay out and explain everything that I do as much as possible. Now there are gonna be times where you know you gotta rush through certain things, but like for the most part, take the time to document. That's what I personally do and that's what I've learned and I feel like it's very effective is documentation, documentation, documentation. Document your work and explain why you decide to make that decision in regards to your code. It just helps a lot. Now the second thing that I'm learning after three years of learning how to code is balancing when to just optimize things or just get the work done because of the time limit that I'm given. Like that's something that I don't feel like people talk about enough, but like sometimes you may get a bug um, in your ticket, like in you're trying to figure out while you're looking at the code, whether it's in like TypeScript, you're looking at the code and you're seeing like, hey, could I write this more efficiently? Like, could I like increase the time that when somebody clicks on it, it gives a better runtime? Like, how can I make this better? But then you also have to take into account, especially if you're working in a professional environment, the time that they give you to get this done, like in your sprint or how long do you have? Because sometimes I try to, it's, it's, it's a real thing that I'm learning as I'm getting more experience. Like, okay, I want to do something even better than it's already presented, but do I have the time to invest to get that done in a more optimized way? And this is something that I'm learning. Sometimes I want to do something in a more optimized way, but I don't have the necessary time to optimize it. So I just try to do a solution that just gets the ticket done and then I move on to the next one. Sometimes I don't have time to make it absolutely perfect the way that I see it. I just have to get the work done because I'm getting paid to get this task done, get this ticket done. So I have to pass it along the QA and keep it moving. This is the type of stuff that I'm learning after three years of learning how to code because it's starting to be more of a thing I have to constantly think about when I get tickets because I got to understand like you don't want to take longer than what's required to get this ticket done. You have to keep it moving and this is actually a good thing because it's helping me get better at how I can optimize faster and this is where I talk about. Um, as well as, like I said, when you documented things, time starts picking up. And the key is just balancing this time so that everybody is satisfied with the results. Now, the last lesson that I have to learn after learning code for over three years is staying consistent. Now, I've made videos about being consistent in the past, but I still want to emphasize this because the less time that I write code or I'm studying how to be a better programmer, the more that I feel like I have to relearn this in order to keep up with my skills. And the reason why I say staying consistent is important because not to say that you have to spend so much time throughout the day to be able to code all the time, because sometimes you may get burnt out, sometimes you wanna break, but just being consistent with something every single day when it regards to programming is so important because you have to stay sharp with these skills. You never know when it may be a layoff, you never know when things may not go the way that you see it in this current moment and you have to just stay prepared as much as possible. Not to the point where you have anxiety where you like, dang, I don't know, but like to the point where you're so confident in yourself that no matter what happens, you already prepared for the worst case scenario. And that's what I mean by staying consistent in regards to programming. Like I've learned that I just try to stay consistent as possible to be prepared for the worst case scenario so that 
my confidence is already there and I know that I can continue to excel in this career field no matter what. And it's the little things that you could do to just stay fresh on your skills. Like something that I do, for example, is I have a list of questions, like front end engineer questions. And what I do sometimes, maybe I may be at Barnes and Nobles or I may be just sitting down at a cafe. Like sometimes I just go through them and I just read the questions and the answers and just try to memorize them. Just try to make sure I stay fresh because I know if I have interviews, et cetera, in the future, I know that they're going to ask me these certain questions and I just want to be already 100% prepared for them. So that's all I have to talk about in this video. I hope you all enjoyed it and I will see you all in the next video.